Hello world, this is Dewey from Learn with Dewey, and today we're going to be learning English through stories. Specifically, I'm going to be reading through the story of Peter Rabbit by Beatrix Potter. And as I go through, I'll kind of explain some of the words, help understand some of the concepts, so that way you can better learn English. So let's go ahead and get started. Once upon a time, there were four little rabbits, and their names were Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail, and Peter. Now, as you may know from this, there's only one real name that's mentioned here, which is Peter. These other are kind of silly kids' names. They lived with their mother in a sandbank underneath the root of a very big fir tree. Now, a sandbank, that may be a confusing word. Basically, it's like if you have a river that's going along and you have the river down here, then on the side, you might have sand and you'd call that the bank of the river. And so if the bank of the river is made from sand, you'd call that the sand bank. So that's what they're saying, meaning when they say uh, that they live with their mother in a sand bank underneath the root of a very big fir tree. And fir is just a type of tree. Um, and so it's just kind of describing it. It's the type of tree that's green all year round. Another term would be a evergreen tree. All right, so carrying on. They lived with their mother in a sandbank underneath the root of a very big fir tree. Now, my dears, said old Mrs. Rabbit one morning, you may go into the fields or down the lane, but don't go into Mr. Gregor's garden. Now, a couple notes there. When they talk about down the lane. Lane is another term for like a road. Uh, it'd probably be a small road. And so when she says down the lane, that means like walking along the lane or walking down the lane. All right, next page. Your father had an accident there. He was put in a pie by Mrs. McGregor. You can see here the pie that Mrs. McGregor made their father out of, which is a little intense. Now run along and don't get into mischief. I am going out. Now going out is kind of a little bit more of a slang term. Basically, you know, she's at the house. She's now going to, I think later on they talk about she's going to the, the take some buns somewhere. And so going out is just means like leaving the house. Then old Mrs. Rabbit took a basket and her umbrella and went through the wood to the baker's. She brought, she bought a loaf of brown bread and five currant buns. Now one note here, it says, talks about uh, went through the wood. And uh, wood has a couple of different meanings. The most simple meaning of the word wood is just a material. And so a tree is made of wood. Now another way that you can use that word is to say that you're uh, a large collection of trees. You would call those woods or forest. And so in this situation, when she's saying she went through the wood, she's meaning not necessarily that she's going through individual pieces of wood, but she's walking through a forest or sometimes a smaller forest would be called a wood, like a walking through the woods. All right. And then when she talks about brown bread and then find five current buns, current is uh, a type of berry and, uh, and then buns is like a little baked good. Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail, who were good little bunnies, went down the lane to gather blackberries. But Peter, who was very naughty, ran straight away to Mr. Gr McGregor's garden and squeezed under the gate. Now, this is where this picture is really helpful to understand the word squeezed. Squeeze normally it refers to like when you take something and you squeeze it, you hold it really tight. But in this situation, it's kind of used for maneuvering under something or climbing underneath it. So you can see here that Peter is squeezing underneath the gate. Squeeze. First he ate some lettuce and some French beans, then he ate some radishes. And then, feeling rather sick, he went to look for some parsley. But round the end of the cucumber frame, who should he meet but Mr. McGregor? Now I have to admit, I was even a little confused when I first read this cucumber frame. Now cucumber is a type of vegetable and frame usually refers to like uh, when you're building a house, you first build the frame, which is kind of like the, uh, the, the pieces of wood that hold it together. But in this situation, it helps to under look at these pictures to understand what they're talking about. It's basically this kind of wood, almost like mini greenhouse that they used to sprout cucumbers in. And I think that's what she's referring to when she says uh, a cucumber frame. I would say that's not as common, at least in more modern English. 
Mr. McGregor was on his hands and knees planting out young cabbages, but he jumped up and ran after Peter, waving a rake and calling out, Stop, thief! Now you can see a rake is uh, a tool you use for gardening. It's this long stick with little metal uh, tines is, is the term they use for it, or kind of like little sticks at the end of that. And that's a rake. Peter was most dreadfully frightened. He rushed all over the garden, for he had forgotten the way back to the gate. He lost one of his shoes among the cabbages and the other shoe among the potatoes. Now here, uh, one of the big words that we mentioned here is dreadfully frightened. So uh, dreadfully is um, kind of comes from the word dread or to dread something. So that'd be something like you're wanting to avoid. And so in this situation, when you're talking about most dreadfully frightened, which mean like incredibly frightened, I'm so incredibly frightened, uh, kind of like heightened level of scared being frightened. After losing them, he ran on four legs and went faster, so that I think he might have got away altogether if he had not unfortunately run into the gooseberry net and got caught by the large buttons on his jacket. It was a blue jacket with brass buttons, quite new. Peter gave himself up for lost and shed big tears, but his sobs were overheard by some friendly sparrows who flew to him in great excitement and implored him to exert himself. All right, so we have a couple interesting terms here. Uh, first of all, gave himself up for lost. This is a, a phrase that kind of refers to kind of like just giving up. It's like, oh, this is a lost cause, which is kind of like uh, there's no hope and he's going to get caught anyway, so why even try? That's what he means when it says gave himself up for lost. Uh, then next, uh, we talk about the uh, sparrows came along and implored him to exert himself. That's kind of like encouraged him or pleaded with him, said, please keep going, keep trying to, to get out of there. So they're good friends, the sparrows. Mr. McGregor came up with a sieve, which he intended to pop upon the top of Peter, but Peter wriggled out just in time, leaving his jacket behind. All right, so a sieve again, uh, this is great where we're having these pictures here. A sieve is basically a uh, kind of a bowl that has crossed metal wire that allows you to, like for instance, if you put dirt on, in there and shake it, you'd have the big rocks stay out and then all the dirt would fall out. And uh, you'd also use that maybe sometimes in, a, in cooking. Uh, and this is called a sieve. And then next, wriggled. This is similar to uh, when we were talking about, um, uh, what was the word? Uh, squeezed. So similar to how Peter squeezed underneath the fence, and this time he wriggled out. It's kind of like if you're crawling and you're crawling side to side very quickly, you might say that would be wriggling out. Again, this is a little bit more of a silly word used for something like a, a children's book, wriggled out. And rushed into the tool shed and jumped into a can. He would have been so beautiful to hide in if it had not had so much water in it. Specifically, this type of can uh, is would be referred to as a watering can. I think nowadays we wouldn't just call it a can, we'd call it a watering can because that's what it's used to, to do is to water flowers and such. Mr. McGregor was quite sure that Peter was somewhere in the tool shed, perhaps hidden underneath a flower pot. He began to turn them over carefully, looking under each. Presently, Peter sneezed. Kershoo! Mr. McGregor was after him in no time. Now, this isn't a real word. This is kind of like just a description of what the sound is when you sneeze. So don't get too hung up on this. This is kind of just, again, a silly word to help understand the sounds of Peter sneezing and tried to put his foot upon Peter. Now, this is talking about Mr. McGregor, which we were just ended on. <clears throat> Mr. McGregor, and he tried to put his foot upon Peter, who jumped up on a window, upsetting three plants. The window was too small for Mr. McGregor, and he was tired of running after Peter, he went back to his work. So Peter got away, and Mr. Gregor got too tired, so he just gave up. Peter sat down to rest. He was out of breath and trembling, and he was out of breath and trembling with fright, and he had not the least idea which way to go. Also, he was very damp from sitting in the can. All right, so two words here we're gonna talk about, trembling with fright. Basically, that's a way of describing he was very scared. So he was frightened, but he was trembling. It's kind of like shaking so much because he was scared, trembling with fright. 
Uh, and then finally, also he was damp. So damp is kind of like referring to being wet, but uh, very low amounts of being wet. So being damp from having been in that, that watering can. After a time, he began to wander about, going lippity, lippity, not very fast, looking all around. He found a door in a wall, but it was locked, and there was no room for a fat little rabbit to squeeze underneath. All right, so lippity lippity is kind of like we talked about before. This isn't a real word. This is just kind of the sounds that w you might imagine a rabbit would make as it's hopping around, lippity lippity. And then squeeze again, that word that we learned earlier, as he tried to squeeze underneath, but this time he was too fat. An old mouse was running in and out over the stone doorstep, carrying peas and beans to her family in the wood. Again, remember the wood is like the forest. Peter asked her for the way to the gate but she had such a large pea in her mouth that she could not answer. She only shook her head at him. Peter began to cry. Then he tried to find his way straight across the garden, but he came in more and more puzzled. Presently, he came to a pond where Mr. McGregor filled his water cans. A white cat was staring at some goldfish. She sat very, very still, but now and then the tip of her tail twitched as if it were alive. Peter thought it was best to go away without speaking to her. He had heard about cats from his cousin, little Benjamin Bunny. So here we talk about how Peter became more and more puzzled. Now puzzled comes from the word puzzle, which is just uh, kind of like you'll have those different shaped things that you put together and make a picture. And that's a puzzle. And, uh, and so because a puzzle is kind of like a, a difficult challenge to do, we have this term puzzled, which is kind of mean he's confused or perplexed. He's unsure of what to do next because of the fact that he can't find his way out of the garden. So that's kind of what the word puzzled means from means. He went back towards the tool shed, but suddenly quite close to him, he heard the noise of a hoe, scritch, scratch, scratch, scritch. Peter scuttered underneath the bushes, but presently, as nothing happened, he came out and climbed up on a wheelbarrow and peeped over. The first thing he saw was Mr. McGregor hoeing onions. He, his back was towards Peter, and beyond him was the gate. So Peter finally found the gate after he's been searching this whole time. So a couple things here. Uh, when we talk about the hoe, that's a tool you use in the garden to remove weeds. Uh, and then the scritch. That's, that's again a pretend word. Scratch is a real word, word that refers to, you know, you take and you're trying to, to get the weeds out and maybe you're making like this sound. And the sound would be like scratching along something. It'd be scratching. Um, and then peeped over, as you can kind of see in this picture, he is peeping over the edge of the wheelbarrow to see the gate and Mr. McGregor. Peter got down very quietly off the wheelbarrow and started running as fast as he could along a straight walk behind some black currant bushes. Mr. McGregor caught sight of him at the corner, but Peter did not care. He slipped underneath the gate and was safe at last in the wood outside the garden. Now, one thing to mention here is it says along a straight walk. Now, walk is normally a term, you know, for I'm standing up and I'm going to go from one spot to another. I'm going to walk using my legs. Uh, however, in this situation, it's kind of referred to an area where you might do that action. So I might walk along this path. So they would call that a walk. Now, again, this is a more of an older English term and isn't used as often nowadays, but that's, that's what that refers to. Mr. McGregor hung up the little jacket and the shoes for a scarecrow to frighten the blackbirds. Now, this is kind of a funny word, scarecrow. It's the combination of two words to kind of form a new word. So you can see from this picture, this is what you call a scarecrow, and its purpose is to scare away crows. Uh, and so a lot of times you'll see in a farmer's garden, they'll have these scarecrows, which kind of look like people to help scare the birds away. Uh, what's a little funny is that it's called a scarecrow, but in this case, he's frightened away blackbirds. Peter never stopped running or looked behind him till he got home to the big fir tree. He was so tired that he flopped down upon the nice soft sand on the floor of the rabbit hole and shut his eyes. His mother was very busy cooking. She could wonder, wondered what he had done with his clothes. It was the second little jacket and pair of shoes that Peter lost in a fortnight. Now, Fortnite, you may know that from the, the video game. Uh, now, Fortnite actually means basically 14 days uh, or two weeks. So it's kind of a, a way of describing time. Uh, however, it's not really at, used as often nowadays, um, but that's, that's what that means. 
I'm sorry to say that Peter was not very well during the evening. His mother put him to bed and made him some chamomile tea, and she gave a dose of it to Peter. One tablespoon to be taken at bedtime. But Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail had bread and milk and blackberries for supper. Because they did what they were supposed to. The end. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this uh, short story from Beatrix Potter about Peter Rabbit. And I hope you were able to learn some new words in English as we went along. If there are other stories you'd like me to do, or if you have other questions about this story, feel free to comment below and I'll get to your answers right away. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.